story. Palestinian divisions in Gaza are offering a way in for Iran. And that's bringing fears in the region over the motives of the dominant Shia power in an area which is traditionally Sunni Muslim. Especially as a crisis hit Hamas is desperate for help from whoever can provide it in the form of money or weapons. Paul Slee reports now. This woman is afraid to show her face. Twelve years ago, she became one of the few Palestinians to convert to Shiism. No one in her family knows. She says if they find out, they'll kill her. Palestinians are Sunnis by tradition, and converting to Shiism is seen as betrayal. The Sunni says to the Shia, we must fight for you. But I think Shia Islam, like it is in Iran, gives women the opportunity to participate in every sphere of society, in politics, in the courts, in theater. It's completely different to here, where I feel lost and never know if I acted right or wrong. Three and a half years ago, Hamas was voted into power in Gaza. Since then, the strips become a battleground for violent confrontations between Palestinian factions, a situation ripe for Iran to capitalize on. And because most of the world refuses to recognize them, Hamas leaders are taking help from wherever they can, even if it's from a country where 90% of the population is Shia. People in Hamas, especially the, fo the founders, uh, saw themselves belong to the Sunni group, not to the Shia. And they understood that every support that you get, you have to pay for it. And the question is, what kind of payment it's going to be. But the Israelis are worried about weapons. They're convinced of flooding into Gaza from Iran. There is very tangible Iranian support for Hamas, both in the terms of fi finance, uh, in weapons supplies, in uh, diplomatic support. Uh, it's a very, very tangible hands-on support that Hamas receives from Iran. And first of all, they boast about it, it's public, and secondly, we've discovered all sorts of Iranian weapons shown up in the Gaza Strip. But Sheikh Ibrahim Sassou says it's got nothing to do with the Sunni-Shia divide. In fact, he says there's no real difference between the two. The heart of the problem is Iran's growing influence. I do not agree at all, totally, overwhelmingly, with those uh, Arab leadership who oppose Iran, believe me, not because Iran is a Shia. The Arab regimes, the Arab totalitarian regimes, unfortunately, do not want uh, this kind of regime, which is, in a certain sense, a democratic regime in Iran. Hamas was among the first to congratulate Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad on his re-election. And the disorder on the streets of Gaza and in Ramallah's parliament means Iran's influence will grow. I think the talks are not progressing, they're actually regressing. And uh, we are now at a much further point from unity than we were uh, last March. Palestinian unity is further away than ever. The next time Hamas and Fatah sit down together will be in August. But no one's really hopeful that that round of talks will yield anything new. Paul Aslia, RT, Ramallah.